Coming up next on Home Team 19 News, a Painesville man viciously stabs his wife and turns the knife on himself. The exclusive details next. Maybe you've heard about the tender roast chicken sandwich up the road at KFC, but you haven't tried it. So moist, tender, full of flavor. What are you waiting for? How about we drop the price? Okay. Right now you can try tender roast for just a buck ninety-nine. Ready to get creative? Now, during the JCPenney Ride at Home Sale, virtually everything you can imagine is 10 to 50% off. The JCPenney Ride at Home Sale. It could change everything. Take an additional 10% off selected items through May 2nd. From Hallmark Hall of Fame, Kate D'Angelo has finally found Mr. Right. I've fallen in love with you. I've fallen in love with you, too. Now all she has to do... Oh, no. ...is tell her fiancé... This just isn't gonna work. ...and break it to her family. Harry, right? The bottom-feeding scavenger. Have you thought at all about what your life is going to be like with him? CBS presents Mary Louise Parker, American Beauty's Peter Gallagher, and B.B. Newworth in a story about following your heart wherever it leads you. Cupid and Kate, CBS next Sunday. Tuesday, caught with a good the date rape drug. But how far were these teens going to go? Just wanted to see what would happen. Plus, a new romance takes a back seat to a new job. Frankly, I forgot you existed. Richard Crenna guest stars. All new Judging Amy, CBS Tuesday. This week on The Late Show, don't miss David Spade, Oasis, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Dana Carvey, and Kim Basinger. It's all new all week. Now your local news. From WOIO-TV, Home Team 19 News starts right now. Cleveland's just crazy for karaoke. And tonight, Ronnie Duncan takes us to some of the hottest spots for singing your heart out. Well, you need sunglasses or an umbrella to start your work week. Dual Doppler XL has the info you need to prep for Monday morning. Our message about the war is a very simple one. America was right in fighting that war. The war may be over, but 25 years later, the conflict goes on in the hearts and minds of Vietnam veterans. Tonight, local vets talk about those lingering feelings. This is so bad. And tenants on Cleveland's east side express a flood of emotion over the vicious murder of their landlord. It's a surprise to everybody. Plus, people who live in a Painesville neighborhood are stunned by news of a horrific murder-suicide involving two of their neighbors. It's a story you'll see only on Home Team 19 News, and it's where we begin tonight. And thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Rick Jackson. And I'm Alicia Booth. Just why would a man stab his wife of 30 years to death, then turn the knife on himself? That's the question investigators in Lake County are trying to answer tonight. People who knew the Painesville couple say they didn't have an obvious problem, but now they know something was dead wrong. Harry Boomer has details in a story you'll see only on Home Team 19 News. Oh, my. I'm shocked. The Lake County Sheriff's Office says late Friday night, a domestic argument turned deadly at this Painesville Township condo. Everybody, I guess, is shocked. Today, it was front page news. While 57-year-old Joseph Rennick and his 50-year-old wife, Christine, sat in their car in this garage, he allegedly stabbed her in the neck with a four-inch knife. Police say she was able to flee to the laundry room of the home she and her family had lived in for only five months. Mr. Rennick reportedly pulled her back to the garage and continued his deadly assault. Their 30-year-old disabled daughter, Yvonne, heard her mother screaming and used a special phone to call relatives for help. Rennick's son, Peter, and his son-in-law, Jamie Marcy, forced their way into the garage and walked in in the middle of the murder. Rennick reportedly screamed out, Jamie, get the hell out of here. You don't need to see this. As they pleaded with him to stop stabbing his wife, deputies say Rennick confessed, I've killed her. I'm going to kill myself. I can't live like this. Instead of stopping, he allegedly plunged his knife into his own throat at least three times. When he fell to the floor, he put his left arm around his wife. They lay there bleeding to death in a last embrace. Actually, I followed the ambulance in. I had come back from uh, seeing the ballet in Cleveland. Neighbors were dismayed to find out that a murder-suicide could happen in their quiet and, until now, murder-free community. It's a surprise to everybody. I think that's sort of the normal reaction that people have is they seem like such nice folks. Everybody was surprised it would happen. In Painesville, Harry Boomer, Home Team 19 News. Now tonight, police tell Home Team 19 News that Rennick stabbed his wife at least 10 times. 
They say he told his son he did it because she had done something to humili humiliate the entire family. What that was, we may never know. Tonight, friends and neighbors of a Cleveland man murdered in his home yesterday are grieving, and they say they're scared. The body of 67-year-old King Norfleet was found in his apartment on East 87th Street. Police say his throat was slashed and that he was apparently killed by someone who broke into his home. King's neighbors say they just can't believe this happened. He was so nice. I know you ready for that was so nice to my kids. He never tried anything nasty with you or nothing. He was just a wonderful man. Neighbors say one big reason they're worried is because they're not sure how close the person who killed Norfleet actually lives to them. Well, the carnage continues on our state highways as the highway patrol is now investigating a fatal car accident that killed two teenagers. The accident happened in Bauman Township, Wayne County on Township Road 119. Troopers say the driver of a Chevy Cavalier was speeding, apparently lost control of the car, spun sideways, struck a ditch, and overturned. Dead is the driver, 18-year-old Christopher Miller of Orville, one passenger, 17-year-old Angel Carrere of Creston, also died. Jaquan Prater was another passenger who was only slightly injured. Now, troopers say none of the teens was wearing a seatbelt. The family of the man killed in a car accident on Lakeshore Boulevard has now erected a memorial in his name. Flowers and signs from friends and family have gone up in place of the wreckage that was there last Thursday morning. The family didn't want to talk on camera, but did say that when people drove down the showway tomorrow, they wanted people to remember the memorial, not the accident where Corey Bolin died. In cities all across the country today, Vietnam veterans came together to remember and to pay tribute to those who never made it home from the war. Cleveland was the scene of one such emotional gathering. It was a time and place for vets to try to heal their old and still painful battle scars. Home Team 19's Paul Cox joins us now with their story. Well, some time ago, Rick and Alicia, people from two different cultures joined up as allies halfway around the world, and now they're living quietly and, pe and peacefully in Cleveland. Twenty-five years ago, they were sharing the same goals, the same nightmares, and now they're sharing the same memories. Left, 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 right. Once again, Clevelanders oh, hey, pause hey. to remember a war now a quarter century gone, but a war so alive and so many memories. Robert. Davis. This scene grew out of the chaos for many, the nightmare that for Americans ended 25 years ago today with the evacuation of the embassy in Saigon. 58,000 Americans died here. 2,000 more have not been accounted for. For those who came home, they had to fight again for respect. Ex-Marine Jeff Campbell still is. I'm proud of what I did, although sometimes I don't feel that way. But I'm... I'm you know, overall, I'm, I'm proud of what I did. And I find a lot more people have a lot more respect for what the Vietnam veterans did in Vietnam and also a lot more willingness to listen to what we have to say about the war. The sense of pain and loss is also very real for our one-time allies. Some people living in Cleveland today remember this as the day when they lost everything. That's uh, today. I am very stressed because we lost my country and uh, many friends died in the Vietnam. The, not the weather, it's a win or loss in that way. Who won or lost? Uh, you know, some people feel there's a North one, but yet look at their economy. And our message about the war is a very simple one. America was right in fighting that war. Now, you may not know that Cleveland's Vietnamese community now numbers about 3,000, most living on the west side of Cleveland, and many still living with the pain of lost loved ones, people that got killed in the war, or people they had to leave behind in Vietnam so they could come here and make a new life for themselves. Alicia? All right, thank you, Paul. In Washington, thousands are making the pilgrimage to see one of the most stirring tributes to those who lost their lives in Southeast Asia. The names of nearly all the 58,000 American soldiers who died in Vietnam are etched into the shiny black marble of the Vietnam War Memorial. Throughout the day, people visited the site to place flowers, flags, and other tokens by the names of their lost loved ones. Others made the now traditional rubbings of names to take away with them as a lasting reminder of the soldier's sacrifice. Well, all the observances focusing on the end of the Vietnam War may have been just too much for one Wisconsin vet. He's taken his own life and that of his two-year-old granddaughter. Police say the man simply drove his car into Lake Michigan from a pier in a lakefront park that's dedicated to veterans. His two-year-old granddaughter was in the car with him. No one knows why. Rescuers tried to save the pair but could not. One vet says he understands how something like this could happen, especially on a day like today. 
you feel completely worthless. Uh, like I said, uh, people don't want to hire you. Um, it's a. Uh, I'm finally trying to ri ri rise up above that. Police say they do think the man planned his suicide, especially for this weekend. Again, they just aren't sure why the little girl had to die with him. Police in Florida say a man there has turned his daughter into a slave. They say the man tied the 11-year-old to a chair every night, made her sleep on it in the near, or made her sleep on it near the pool in their backyard. And sometimes they say he even let her sleep in the house inside a makeshift cage. They were notorious in the neighborhood for their outrageous decorations at holiday time.